All right, guys. I know I'm separating you from coffee and bathroom breaks and snacks, so uh, I've timed this out to 20, 22 minutes, so uh, we should have a few more minutes to, to pause. Uh, my name is Kevin Clark. Uh, I'm a product of, of UGA and MCG, Augusta University, I guess. Uh, right now I work for the CDC. I've been with them for uh, almost nine years. Um, where we're going today, uh, we're going to cover a little bit of background. Well, let me back up. So uh, today we're going to talk about incorporating VR into laboratory training at CDC. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the background, uh, what my team does at CDC, uh, what we did this year with virtual reality. We'll talk a little bit about how we did it. Uh, we won't delve too far into techniques. Uh, and then we'll talk about next steps. Background. This is my team. This is actually our branch, not my team. My team is uh, part of this. Uh, this is a motley crew. Uh, we've got a couple guys in the room from here. Uh, we're about 30 deep. You know, I would call that medium-sized uh, in, in medical illustration uh, world. So we're called the Training and Workforce Development Branch. Uh, we call that TWDB. Uh, CDC is very large. It's 15,000, 16,000 people. Uh, employees, staff, contractors. Uh, there's a lot of divisions. There's a lot of acronyms. We all have different specialties, different missions, different visions. Uh, the important thing to take away uh, is that we do laboratory systems. Uh, so within the systems, this is the division that I work in. We do training. Uh, we do technical guidance, so uh, research and publications. Uh, we also develop workforce development programs for the entire laboratory workforce. Uh, and we do a lot of that work uh, with the partners you see on the screen. Uh, so uh, if nothing else, just remember that we do, uh, we serve the laboratory. And so that funnels into kind of two large audiences. There's public health labs and then clinical health labs. We serve them both. Uh, our branch kind of breaks down into these four areas. We have leadership, we have instructional designers, we have data and evaluators, and then we have the creatives. Uh, so I've already mentioned that everything that we do is focused on the lab. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit more about training and less of those other activities that the division do, does. Uh, in terms of training, uh, these are the modalities that we, we kind of focus on. We have e-learning courses. These are very common. All you guys know. Uh, online courses with animation, multimedia, uh, motion graphics, video, those kinds of things within them. Uh, we do hands-on workshops. So these are actually in a physical laboratory. Uh, we do instructional webinars uh, and then VR. So that's what we're going to talk a lot about today. So why are we interested, were we interested in VR? Uh, this actually started with us about five years ago. Um, and, it, and it's really twofold. Our interest is twofold, I would say. One is uh, it's cool technology for training. And part of my job description is actually to be on the lookout for things like VR, uh, something we can engage, something we can use to, to help uh, users retain information within training. Uh, so it definitely checks that box, right? VR is cool. It's trendy. Uh, seems to be a great fit for training. Uh, the second, and, and maybe more importantly, definitely more importantly, uh, is it we think it'll help us solve a problem we continue to run into. And that's a lack of technology to resolve skills-based training. And so we'll talk a little bit more about knowledge and skill-based uh, on this slide. So I mentioned that we have instructional designers on staff. Uh, generally, the, the way we work is someone in a laboratory will come to us with a training problem, a training need. Uh, our job is to kind of tease that out, dissect it into uh, either knowledge or skills-based domains. Uh, once we've kind of got our arms around that, we need to figure out a modality that we're going to use to solve it. right? Very common sense. Uh, is it going to be a video? Is it going to be animation? Is it going to be e-learning, webinars, uh, hands-on workshops? You know, you know the drill. What we run into is that th though you know, we have a, a fair amount of uh, knowledge and, and creativity on the staff, the, mod the modalities that we have aren't equally split across the knowledge and skills domains. Right? Most of them lean toward knowledge. Uh, we, can, we can make you memorize something. We can, we can tell you a sequence. We can give you a multiple test, a multiple choice test. Uh, we don't have a lot of answers for skills-based training uh, for the laboratory. We have a training laboratory, 
uh, where we actually invite people in to do hands-on workshops. That's really our only answer. Uh, and that's kind of where VR entered our world. E-learning, as I was just talking about, is very common, it's very practical. Uh, in terms of cost, it's, it's much cheaper to produce. Um, most of our customers really rely on e-learning unfairly, right? They ask it to do things it just can't do. We can record you in a laboratory doing a procedure. Um, we can test you on the sequence of the things that you're going to do through a multiple choice test, multiple answer, a survey. But they've gotten no closer to having actually done that procedure, you know, in, in whatever mechanism we need them to do. Uh, but because of the practicality of e-learning, a lot of people use it. Hands-on workshops have been the traditional skills method. Uh, we have a training laboratory. We invite people in. Uh, we help purchase supplies. We help run logistics. We help facilitate the training. Super, super traditional skills-based training. Uh, again, this is where VR kind of intersected us. We think it can help solve this problem. Uh, we haven't considered uh, VR as something that replaces either e-learning or VR. Uh, that's important to note. We don't see it as, as something that replaces anything. Uh, if anything, we see it as something that kind of closes a gap between these two modalities uh, and, and augments uh, skills-based learning. Uh, this room is super technical. You've all heard VR talks before. You probably you know, have headsets at your workplaces or houses. Um, so this slide may not be, be as relevant for you, um, but this is really you know, what we see as the benefits of VR that we can put someone in a virtual laboratory and we can evaluate their skills in that location. Uh, we like it because it's programmable, which creates consistency. Uh, in our hands-on workshops, you have a bias, right? You invite a teacher in there who has a perspective, they have a worldview. Uh, even though uh, you've, you've built a curriculum around that, there's bias around uh, how that person teaches it. Uh, that doesn't happen in a, in a VR application because you have to program every variable. Uh, the third thing is it's deployable. Anyone that has a headset and you know, a, a VR-ready computer can access this. Uh, and maybe last but not least is uh, VR allows you to make very costly mistakes with no real-world consequences. This is super important from a CDC perspective uh, when we kind of live in a biosafety and biosecurity uh, paradigm. So what do we do with VR this year? Uh, I had mentioned this, is better, this has been the better part of five years. Uh, we've been selling leadership, trying to convince them to uh, just give us a little bit of money, a little bit of an opportunity to run with this. Uh, we were very fortunate to receive that in 2019. With that came three deliverables. Uh, so the first is a life cycle. We'll talk about that in a second. The second is to actually build a training course. Uh, and not only build it, but to do a pilot study on it. So that kind of ramped up the, the expectations. And the third is to do an evaluation report. So this is an area, Mike, that you talked about not comfortable doing this at all. Uh, so when I was on the hook for this, uh, very uneasy you know, in accepting this. Uh, but we pushed forward because we were excited about the opportunity. The life cycle, if you guys are nerds about project management, uh, you'll love this. So every one of our training products has a life cycle associated with it. It's just an Excel file. Uh, it's just st it, step by step, how we build it, the different roles that we have on the team, how they come in and out, and then we attach dates to it. For a team that's about 30 large, this is really helpful for being consistent and, and really the, you know, kind of making sure our customers get a repeatable uh, process across everything that we do. Uh, the ADDIE model is, is kind of what we build our life cycles around. It's an educational model. The course, uh, this is the fun part of the presentation. Uh, so we actually uh, did the course on biological safety cabinets. This is a very common instrument in laboratories. They're in almost every biological lab at CDC and public health lab. Uh, we chose BSCs for a couple reason, reasons. One is we're super interested in how VR pairs with e-learning, uh, not necessarily just as a standalone product, but how it pairs with it. We already had an e-learning course on BSCs, uh, so that was a great fit. Uh, the second reason is because we had an e-learning course, there's already consensus on the science. Uh, and so for any of you guys who, who do training, uh, you spend the majority of your time trying to find out what's going to go in the course. What, what sentence, what paragraph, uh, can all the experts come together to, to write the exact science that's going to be in that course? Uh, believe it or not, you spend a lot of time doing that in training. Uh, so that was a check. Uh, and then last but not least is to be proficient in a BSC, you need to be 
you need to have skills, right? That makes sense. Uh, so it was a great fit all around. Uh, these are actually screen grabs from the training. Uh, how we did this is we did it completely in-house. And so this is important. We were, uh, when we were casting vision for this five years ago, we, we wanted to do it in-house. We already had uh, a lot of the creative talent you know, around us. We have medical illustrators. Uh, we have video editors. We have a lot of the, the directors in, in staff. What we really lacked was a Unity programmer. Um, and so this is kind of the sequence of events uh, and how it happened. So we, uh, we found out about the award in December of 18, uh, and we were on the hook to turn that in the following August. Uh, so in January, uh, just one month later after finding out, uh, we hired a Unity uh, developer, and we were off. And so this meant that in January to August, not only did we have to build our first VR project, but we had to complete a pilot study on it. So that's a lot, right? Seven months may seem like a lot of time, but uh, it, it really is not. So the scope of uh, what we did in terms of the training, uh, remember I want, we, we talked about it being paired with e-learning. Uh, the e-learning course is about 35 minutes, uh, completely online. Uh, the VR course, uh, it actually ended up being about 30 minutes. Uh, so total, the entire BSC training was an hour long. Uh, the, the idea was that users would kind of go to the e-learning course, they would memorize uh, the different sequences, the, the things, the knowledge, they would pick up the knowledge from the e-learning and then bring that to the VR environment. Uh, the scope of the VR course, it's kind of threefold and there's some screen grabs that we'll walk through in a second. Uh, users start off in the anteroom, uh, then they move into a laboratory and then there's a final exam. And so this is a, a kind of a walk through of the anteroom, there's no sound. Uh, this is just stitched together. Each one of these things is about a minute long. Uh, so we knew for this audience in particular, uh, laboratory staff are not technical, right? They spend most of their time on a bench top uh, with a pipette in their hand. Or, or they're not around a computer, not around technology. And so we knew, especially for this, that we'd have to get them comfortable in VR. So that's all this time is. So it's about 10 minutes. How do I teleport? How do I pick up things? And this is with the Vive Pro, if you're, if you're asking. Um, you know, how do I open Locker? And we're mimicking all these interactions they're going to use later in the actual training. So right now it's just getting them comfortable, getting their sea legs. So here they're putting on PPE. There's lots of Easter eggs throughout this training. Uh, so you'll see things like Batman gloves and 80s glasses, and there's all kinds of fun things going on. And they move into the laboratory. Check. All right, here's the laboratory. Uh, our CDC labs do not look like this, right? This is, we, uh, we were intentional about trying to make it a, a modern, kind of fun look. I think we did that. Use a little sound. Uh, everything's functional in the laboratory. You can pick up things, you can throw them if you want to. There's a lot of Easter eggs in there uh, with our photos and just little things that we've, we've thrown in. Uh, they eventually make their way to the BSC. The, the training lasts about 15, 20 minutes within the actual laboratory. It's completely guided. So the, the LCD screen that you're seeing with the voice and the, the talent uh, is guiding the user through the entire training, and it follows the exact knowledge they picked up in the e-learning course. The training focuses on, we would say, three to five main areas. There's disinfection, which is what you're seeing. Uh, there's airflow, which is really important in a BSC. Uh, and then set up, so how you bring in instruments, how you set it up within the BSC. Hand speed's very important. It affects airflow. Uh, so we gave them a visual indicator there. That's funny, it's got sound on it. I totally missed that. All right, that's the laboratory. And then I mentioned there's a final exam. So uh, as you would expect, uh, it's a graded exercise. It's exactly what they went through through the training uh, but now it counts. There's no feedback. There's no guidance. Uh, you have to recall that information, and everything has a point value ascribed to it. Uh, and so they'll go through each of these challenges, and at the end, all of the results are displayed on a semicircular wall. We'll let this play out. Or not. All right, sorry for the tech difficulties. All right, so we'll 
pick back up. This is the, uh, the data wall that they're shown. So all of this data is uh, captured within the app and then exported into an Excel file. We're working on a way to systematize that. Right now, you can see they got a 78 out of 100, so they've actually failed. Uh, so that is the project, huge undertaking, uh, very big project to cut our teeth on uh, for the data folks in the room. This is the pilot. So we did an internal pilot with only CDC staff. Uh, we tried to cut it evenly between novices and experts, kind of missed that mark, uh, but that was the goal, to split those evenly. We use very, very common data collection methods and pre and post tests and then surveys on uh, both the e-learning course and the VR course uh, to get the data. Uh, this data is actually being crunched right now, that evaluation report, which is that third deliverable. It's about 80 pages right now. It's in clearance, so I can't share uh, physical copies of that with you right now. Uh, I can give you some of the highlights. I'll give you three big highlights. Uh, the first one is in terms of value, that we saw 94% of the experts in the pilot agree that VR gave them practical experience in a BSC. These are experts at CDC, pretty big. Uh, in terms of confidence, 100%, 100% of the novices reported an increase in confidence in a BSC, 90% of the experts. The end's different on the experts because uh, there was a fair amount of them that, that felt there was no room to grow, right? They came in with, you know, 100%, uh, so, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but 90% of the experts, it's, it's just fine with us. Uh, this is what makes VR so compelling. Uh, this is skill increase, right? So across these major domains, work setup, decontamination, airflow, startup, identifying parts. Three of the five, we saw, we saw a huge increase. Two, we didn't. Is that on us? The first time creating a project? It could be. Are these also areas where people could use a little bit more training? Yeah, maybe. Uh, so we're looking into that right now. Uh, there's plenty of missteps that we made in the project uh, that could point to this being a development issue for us. So that's the most compelling uh, data that we have to share out of this. The next steps for us and really what we learned, uh, hopefully you guys agree, there's, there's a lot of data in the pilot study, but just what I've shown you today, uh, it's, it's very positive, right? It's very affirming uh, that we thought VR uh, is a viable training technology, especially compared uh, we're being paired with e-learning. Uh, the data proved that. We saw an increase in practical experience, confidence, and skills. Uh, so big, big wins in all of those areas. Uh, and, and what our team learned, this is a little more internal. Uh, we've never done this before, right? We have a creative team. We have animators. Uh, we've never had to be you know, worried about Unity or, or trying to move uh, materials from C4D into Unity. And, not knowing that those channels, those material channels, weren't going to transfer and we'd have to rebuild them uh, in Unity. These are all things we were learning on the fly. Uh, we had to onboard a, a new programmer, um, all the while cutting our teeth on the very first project. Uh, and then the uh, sprint approach, which, you know, Mike, you mentioned design thinking uses this iterative approach. Uh, we rarely do that kind of approach for, e for training. We use a waterfall approach, which is like kind of uh, assembly line, you know, the creative gets it, then the programmer gets it, very traditional. Uh, for this one in particular, uh, and because of the rush and the urgency in it, we adopted a sprint approach, which is iterative. So we met, uh, we would all have to-do items, action items, we'd meet every two weeks, we'd come back together, put on the headset, test it, and then iterate very, very quickly. Uh, I, I think the success of this project is, is really because of that model. Uh, had we done this waterfall model, I, I really don't think, you know, we would have had the, the kind of project that we have today. Uh, so we're super excited about it. We learned a ton. Uh, these are the next steps for us in terms of a, uh, a division. That evaluation report is in clearance. Uh, I think by AMI, you know, if you're interested, we'll have that. It's 80 pages. It's, it's probably more than you want. Uh, the same pilot test that we did internally, we're actually going to do that externally. So I'm traveling a lot this year. Uh, we're going to six uh, U U.S. labs, and then we're actually going to Thailand uh, to, the, to do the exact pilot study that we did internally and see if it works outside our walls. Uh, so that's really exciting. Um, because of the, the time frame um, with this project, we, there were some objectives that we left off uh, just because we, we couldn't not turn in the project in August. Uh, so we're currently adding a couple objectives to this project. Uh, so that's around uh, emergency shutdown, 
And what are the other ones? Yeah, emergency shutdown, startup procedures, um, and spills within a BSC. Uh, so we're adding those now. Uh, PPE is going to be our second uh, laboratory training VR project, so we're super excited about that. Uh, we're really excited about that because we want, uh, we're really going to amp up the emotional uh, aspects that VR has. We're going to try to put someone in. Uh, we really think people know the sequence of PPE, right? But uh, when they're in a moment, they're in a hot zone, or they're, they're in a situation that creates a lot of stress, things happen, they can't recall that information. So we're going to play on that. We're going we're gonna to try to build that kind of emotional uh, experience within the VR app and, and test their ability to recall that information. Uh, we're not going to build something that just focuses on how to put on PPE. Most of our guys know how to do that. Uh, the last bullet on the screen is it's more for us. This was our first project. There's a lot of room to grow. Uh, there's a lot of things we've got to clean up, and we've got to figure out how to scale it. We've got to do more than one project uh, in a year. And so we've got some room uh, to grow there. And I think that's it. Uh, I know it's, it's not super technical. I'm happy to answer the technical questions in the break. Come and find me. Thank you, Brad, for having me. Uh, thank you, Santiago, who's uh, on my team and was really the lead uh, artist on the project. Uh, you did a fantastic job. Uh, so thank you guys so much.